Welcome to part 4 of the Crossy Road Castle Gem Quest. Crossy Road Castle is a game from Hipster Whale on Apple Arcade. As usual, the quest starts by looking for levels with green doors. Well, on this tower, they're kinda bluish. They appear randomly throughout the tower. However, there are levels that are reserved. You don't have to search for secret doors on those levels. As an example, you won't find a secret door on level 1. That's the starting level. You won't find a secret door on any level that's a multiple of 10. That's the heart vending machine level. You won't find it on any level that ends in the number 9, as that's a level before the heart vending machine level. Secret doors are not on the boss levels, which is any multiple of 30 plus 1. Although, it would be pretty sneaky of Hipster Well to do something crazy like that on future towers. Sometimes, to find something, the trick is knowing where not to look. But in this case, we know the gems are in the Great Treehouse, so let's get the quest started. Play through the game until you see a level like this. The level has an open background with vines at the top left. A quick jump to the left reveals the alternate exit. There are many levels with platforms that slide diagonally along a line, so be very careful before you jump. You don't have to jump right away. You could just slide along until it's obvious that there's solid ground below. But if you wait too long, you won't be able to make the jump. Once you reach the secret level, there will be a room with 100 coins. They're in the shape of two cats. The left eye of the cat on the left has the gem. The goal is to get the gem. You can reach it by bouncing off the platforms. But be careful, the platforms periodically move back and forth. This next level is kinda like a level within a level. Once you enter the level, you'll be in a box that is traveling from left to right. Start the level by avoiding the spikes, although I suppose that's obvious. The point is that you'll want to be ready to leave the moving structure. Once the yellow door is in range, ignore it and fall towards the green door. You'll have to be quick, reaching the lower platform before the structure reaches the upper platform. Otherwise, the lower platform will be inaccessible. This level is sloppy, but not too difficult. Essentially, the green slime has to bounce off each red wall. Just toggle the switch to bounce a ball to the blue switch. Once successful, the floor will open up, allowing access to the gem. The green slime won't make it to the switch without your assistance. Fortunately, there's no rush. There's plenty of time to figure it out, as long as you don't have a teammate running to the yellow door. That's a big problem with getting the next gem. The path to the secret door requires a very specific jump. It also involves passing a yellow door. New players are very likely to use the yellow door. They're also likely to kill the box-shaped enemy. To reach the secret door, you'll need to jump off that enemy to reach the upper platform. This is not the most difficult jump in the game, but it's very easy to miss. It's also very easy to miss the timing on these blue platforms. The level design here is kinda cute, although you might not think it's so cute if you can't reach the gem. The little blue enemy is walking across a floor with blue switches. As each switch is triggered, the blue blocks are toggled. The trick is to time your movements with the action above. What's especially challenging here is the timing. It's not always the same interval between toggles. It could be about a second and a half, or a little over two seconds. That slight variation can ruin your rhythm. This is why I carefully watch when a switch is going to be triggered. It can be challenging to watch the jumps and the switches at the same time. But that's the trick to collecting this gem. The location to the next secret door is surprisingly easy to overlook. While recording footage for this video, I couldn't remember where I had gotten this gem. 
That's because this level can vary slightly. It's a level with light brown platforms. The whole structure starts to crumble once you jump onto it. The secret door is on the lower right, but sometimes it's not so apparent. While the platforms are falling around you, it's instinctive to jump for higher ground. That's the head fake. The level leads you to look upwards towards the yellow door when the secret door is below. This secret level is a foot race. The objective is to make it to the gem before the switch is triggered. The start of this level is not too bad, just some crumbling platforms to jump past. It's the second part that's tricky. Red and blue platforms alternate. Their positioning can easily delay you if you're not expecting it. One bad mistake and the gem becomes unreachable. Here, on another attempt, not much is different. The idea is the same, be as fast as possible. It would be nice to give you some grand words of wisdom to help you make the jump, but it's really just a matter of practice. There's a difference between knowing what to do and actually doing it. That's also true with the bird boss of this tower. The woodpecker is not terribly challenging, and yet sudden death is common here. The trouble starts with the first part of the fighting. The woodpecker will bang on the tree, alerting the bugs to attack you. The higher the level, the more bugs that will appear. Next, the woodpecker attacks. It will swoop across the screen horizontally. Transparent lines reveal where the next strike will occur. Finally, the woodpecker dive bombs towards the ground, but gets stuck. This raises many questions. One, what is it with this game and hitting birds in the butt? Unfortunately, that's how the battle is supposed to progress. However, this leads to a second question. Isn't the fight over? The bird can't move. It will stay stuck, like this, indefinitely. That brings up a third question. Is this inhumane? Look at that poor bird. Clearly it's in distress. But the only way I can free the bird is to hurt the bird. Such a dilemma. But aside from critiquing the game design or pondering philosophical questions, there is something noteworthy here. In multiplayer, you can attack the bird at the exact same time, scoring extra hits. This shortens the boss battle. This delay might help you to coordinate a team attack, assuming you're in communication with your teammates. Anyway, repeat this battle cycle three times to win. For the last gem, look for a level with crumbling platforms, bouncy platforms, and diagonally sliding platforms. The trick is to jump towards the upper right, where a secret door awaits. The appearance of this room can be randomized, so I don't have an exact set of instructions. But essentially, it's a level with a sudden jump. If you miss that jump, you can't reach the secret door. On this secret level, the idea is to shield the enemy from the projectiles by toggling the blue switch. This will block the shots from killing the little blue creature. Try to leave enough space between the blasters. If you switch the blocks too soon or too late, the gem is lost. But this time, the attempt was successful and the gnome was unlocked. The gnome has a creepy laugh, but he does look good in hats. Even though I unlocked all of the hats, I generally don't use them. But with the gnome, he's practically a Crossy Road Castle fashion model. Anyway, since you're still here, I'll end this video with a speed run through Timber Turmoil with the gnome. Thanks for watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Ha 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 